the all new Stumpy 15 is here and everyone's excited about it. An all new frame design, an all new rare shock, and no mechanical shifting? Come hop on the bike with me as I demo the new specialized Stump Jumper 15 and share some of my first impressions on this all new trail bike. She goes, baby. All right, before I throw out any opinions or impressions, let's break this build down. This build is the expert model of the Stumpy 15. That means it's one model higher than the base comp build, putting this build right around $6,500. So let's see what you get for that money. The frame is held together with the Fact 11M carbon that is very familiar from the Stumpy Evo. However, this is no Evo. They have redesigned the frame and gotten rid of the asymmetrical design. The frame houses an all new rare shock, the Fox Float with Genie Shock Tech. The science behind this tech goes far beyond my knowledge, but stick around and you will get to hear my first impressions of it. And similar to the Evo, this frame also comes with multiple adjustment points that can take this bike from a mile crunching missile to an enduro sled. Wrapping up the frame highlights, of course you get your very familiar in-frame storage as we're used to. For most of the builds, you're getting a 36mm Fox Fork. And I say most because they have a very sick Olin's build in the lineup. That comes with a 38mm Olin's Fork and a coil rear shock. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try out one of these as the only one available was the size S3 and my 6 foot 3 dimensions would not get along well with that. For a dropper post, you get Old Reliable with PNW's Loam Dropper. And thank you Specialized for making sizes S4 through S6 come with 200mm of drop to really get that saddle out of the way. The 800mm bars hold your ever so exciting SRAM Maven brakes with 200mm rotors. No seriously, I normally ride Code RSC brakes and oh my goodness, these things had unreal stopping power. These brakes bite, oh my god. Now here comes something trivial. Yeah, we can all say wireless shifting is great, cool, and the future. But to offer this bike without any option for mechanical shifting just seemed a little bit out of touch to me. But maybe I'm missing a bigger picture, who knows? I'm sure you do, so let me know in the comments. That said, we're coming equipped with SRAM GX transmission axis with the pod controller that I actually did enjoy more than the rocker panel that I'm used to. On the rolling end of things, we're getting a set of alloy Revolve Traverse rims wrapped in specialized butcher and eliminator tires. This is going to come set up full 29er in this build, but if you get that sick Olin's build I mentioned, that's coming to you set up as a mullet. The DT Swiss 370 hubs make for a very highly engaged but very silent ride, which I like. It is so quiet. DT Swiss 370s I believe. The full build as I had it in an S5 would be coming in just over 32 pounds, so it's not exactly the lightest trail bike on the market either. All right, first climb. Now that I've finished yapping about some bike parts, let's get to some riding and see what this bike can actually do. I have to say, I really wanted to give this bike all the beans I had on this demo ride. However, sometimes nature has other plans. A 97 degree day with nearly 100% humidity definitely made it challenging to push this bike to its limits. That, along with it being late in the evening, didn't make for the greatest footage that I strive to capture. Alright, as you know with demo bikes, nothing is really set to preference, but so far so good. It is so quiet. DT Swiss 370s I believe. Oh my god, it's silent. Don't forget to stick around to the end of the ride to hear my final thoughts on the bike. For now, enjoy the ride. I tested the shifting under load. <laughs> it works. <Yeah. laughs> Hello, a few more back. All right. She's so quiet, it almost makes you feel like but you can go dangerously fast just because you don't hear anything. 
Let's talk climbing, because after all, this is a trail bike. More recently, I've gotten to test out a pivot switchblade and my own stumpy Evo on similar climbs. I have to say, this one feels like the balance between the two. The switchblade felt like it climbed better, while the stumpy Evo felt like it descended better. These brakes bite, oh my god. I was not used to how much brakes I had right there. And that's the moment where I realized those SRAM mavens were not your usual SRAM brakes. Yeah, you really gotta go light on them. I got pitched forward earlier. Ow, ow, ow. You. Let's hammer it a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong gear. All right, shift, shift under load. I'm gonna take this in a while. It leans nicely, but man, this thing feels rigid. Keep in mind, I'm coming off a 160, 150 Evo that I've slacked out. So breaking that statement down a bit, this is a demo bike. There's a 90% chance that the suspension is not set up to my liking, but coming from a slacked out stumpy Evo with more travel, this definitely felt like way more of a trail bike than a bike meant for big hits at the park. I guess as it should. Part's good on any bike. See that kind of stuff? It loves that kind of stuff. Just small trail hits. It eats that up. All right. This one is arguably one of the best trails in the park and one that I love testing bikes on. A perfect mix of fast flow, scattered chunk, and even a gap jump. This is the kind of terrain this bike was made for, and it showed. As long as you stayed off the brakes, this bike inspired plenty of confidence to just keep on going. All right, let's get her. All right, let's give this bike a little bit of what it's made for. That's the gap. Coming in. He goes, baby. She really rewards being on the brakes when it's needed and not riding them because it can hold the speed really well. Yeah, that's fast. That's really fast. It 
clicks. Not as much as the Evo. My mulleted Evo, I should say. All right, let's see if I can get my cheeky line here. Scared the deer. Yeah. All right, this part is really fast and I, it's getting dark, let's just say that. So let's summarize some thoughts on this bike. It really is an amazing bike, but maybe not the bike that I pick for my needs. As a quiver killer trail bike, I think it would serve the purpose really, really well. Competing with bikes like the Hightower, Switchblade, the Fuel X, and other similar geometry bikes, I think this would be the one I'd choose. The adjustable geometry is just too good, and along with the components you're getting for this price, I think I'd pick this bike. The new Genie Tech Rare Shock really did impress me. The best way I can explain it in my Neanderthal brain is it was stiff and agile on flatter sections with less chatter, but as soon as it ramped up on the chunk, it never made you feel like you were underbiked. Would that be the same in the bike park or in some serious tech? I'd love to find out. Something that left the biggest impression on me, however, was how quiet this bike was. Between the well-greased DT Swiss hubs, the insanely quiet transmission shifts, and overall low chatter from the build as a whole, I was impressed. And weirdly enough, it made the flat sections feel even faster, being able to hear all the terrain under you. Let me know what you think. What bike would you get in this modern trail bike category? And as always, thanks for hopping on the bike with me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, I also want to give a big thank you to my channel sponsor, Patapsco Bicycles, for getting together with specialized brand experience to make this demo happen. Whew, fun ride. Yeah, that heat kicked the crap out of me, dude. It's better now. Uh, it's so much better now. Like 